Now I'm quite excited about today's video because it's the first time that I've been able to show you something that's still in its development stage, something that isn't available yet but is being developed with the possibility of it going into production sometime in the future. Now first of all this whole subject of custom, custom bikes, custom motorcycles, custom parts, everyone has their own interpretation as to what fits in with the word custom. And I'm constantly being told by people in emails and comments that buying parts from a catalogue, if you like, or a website that simply bolt onto the bike is not customising the bike. Now each to their own, but let me tell you my view on this kind of customisation. Now there are some really good custom shops and some really skillful custom builders out there. People who are adept with an angle grinder and a blow torch that can slice and dice your bike and make it look like something really special. But inevitably at the end of this process the customer is handed a huge bill for those services and depending on where he's gone to have this work done and what level of work has been done this can be anything from a couple of thousand to 15 or 20 thousand pounds and that's on top of the cost of the bike and here's the rub that money is money down the drain inevitably when it comes to resale not only is that bike unlikely to realize the amount of money that was spent on it including its purchase quite often it's substantially devalued from what it would originally have been worth if it had been left original and standard and that's why i like the products that come from the likes of motone customs nothing that you do to the bike is irreversible you can bolt these parts on you can take them off and put the original parts back on providing you've kept all the parts and you've kept them safe when it comes to resale you can return your bike back to its original condition sell the bike and get the full value of what that bike's worth and then if you wish you can take those parts that you've taken off those custom parts and sell them on because they still have a high monetary value providing they're in good condition so to my mind this type of customization makes the best and most logical economic sense now i know this is going to sound like a cliche but when it comes to this category for me there are two types of parts there are motor and customs parts and then there's everyone else's parts i think what first attracted me to Motone Customs was the method of manufacture, the way they go about developing things and bringing them to the market because they do everything completely different to everyone else. For some time now CNC machining has been the staple of parts manufacturers because it's relatively speaking quick, simple and cheap to produce but it does have its limitations and I know that well over a year ago now Motone Customs started to look into high pressure die cast aluminium parts. Now this method produces parts which are as good as if not better than the original manufacturer's parts. It allows you to do things that you simply can't do with CNC machining but there is a drawback and that is that it's extremely expensive to produce things this way compared to other methods. I know for a fact through various conversations with Motone over the last year that each of the parts I'm going to show you today individually cost tens of thousands of pounds to produce from research and development to the production of the actual moulds before the first part is manufactured. Now some people see this as business or financial suicide but the way I see it is that it's an indication that Motone Customs are in this for the long haul. They're not just looking to make a quick profit and in order to achieve that they're prepared to go to any length to produce the most unique and high quality parts you can possibly get your hands on. Parts that in many cases put the original manufacturer's parts to shame. 
Now a few weeks ago I showed you the first of the ACG and clutch cover badges that Motone have produced. These were all polished and I showed you them on the Triumph T120. Now I know some people were waiting for the black versions and as of this week they are now available. They basically come in two flavours. There's the ever popular Union Jack design and there's the Webco inspired Big Fish designs and these are available in a textured black finish which matches Triumph's original engine finish and to our minds were eminently suited for the Bob of black now I'm not going to show you the fitting because we've already been through that before and it is literally just two screws for each one so just listen to the music and we'll go through each one individually And now for something completely different. As I'm sure many of you are aware, brass parts are suddenly becoming very popular. And to keep up with customers' requests, Motone is looking into ways of producing brass parts for the modern classic twins. But casting in brass is a different proposition to casting in aluminium. And Motone soon found out that it would require a complete new set of investments to produce the moulds for these parts to be made in brass. Now this would be prohibitively expensive, so Moton looked at the prospects of brass plating the existing aluminium badges, only to find out that plating aluminium is notoriously difficult. Nevertheless, they are experimenting with the possibilities of producing these parts. And these are just the latest in a long line of prototypes that Motone have produced. Motone say that they will not put these into production until they have found a hard wearing vintage look brass finish. And I will emphasize that these are only prototypes. There are no guarantees at this stage that these are going to go into production. Right, so that's just about all I've got time for this week. And I'll leave a link to Motone's bobber page if you'd like to have a look at these parts. Now, myself and Motone couldn't really reach an agreement as to which parts we were going to keep on the bobber permanently. So we thought it might be a good idea to let you have the vote. Let us know which ones you prefer, whether you prefer the Big Fin badges or the Union Jack badges. And whichever gets the highest vote are the ones that we'll leave on the bike. Just leave your vote in the comments section. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I will be back next week. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.